the Lord. Activation. The Lord, by spirit, by his power, will activate everything you need to get you to the sky. We used to say the sky is the limit now. The sky is your starting point. I wanted to hear a global amen. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we're asking, Lord, that today you will take everyone, every sister, every brother, every boy, every girl, every young adult, man or woman, and I pray every sin that tied us down in the past, break, cut, everything away in Jesus' name. Release everyone to dream bigger, to go higher, and to achieve greater in Jesus' name. Confirm your power, your miracle, your signs and wonders, success in everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. You are going to shout another amen before you sit down. God bless you. You can sit down. What we are talking about today, knowing Jesus and experiencing him in life. Knowing him, who he is. Knowing him, what he can do. Knowing him, what he has decided to accomplish in your life and experiencing him. You know, there are things we know but we don't experience. I know that 3 plus 4 is 7, but there's no way I can taste that, I can feel that, I can experience that. There are many things we know that we cannot experience, but when we know him, our Savior, when we know him, our Redeemer, when we know him, the lifter up of our head, we know him and we experience him in life in the morning is there with us afternoon is there with us evening is there with us knowing jesus and experiencing him in life i'm looking at matthew chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 15 matthew chapter 16 but 15 is said unto them but whom say ye that I am? He's saying, I know you've been following me. I know you will be in the boat together. I know that you'll see me heal the sea. You've seen me raising up light, changing lives, transforming lives. But now, I want to know, have you experienced me? Whom say ye that I am? In verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. I feel that. I sense that. I've tasted that. And I've known how you've solved the problems of my life. What I know, that I know in my heart, in my soul, in my mind. I know that I know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the experience. It's not the knowledge of the head. It's not the knowledge, you know, I studied Christian religion. I got a, not that one. This is the one that gives you experience. That is Christ in your life. That he is 
your redeemer. He is your savior. You wake up in the morning and you feel Christ is there. And you're going in the way, you know Christ is there. And anywhere you are, you come into a crossroad. You say, thou art the Christ, the one that says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You have experienced him knowing Jesus and experiencing him in life. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Look at verse 17. It says there, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou. When you know him, he tells you, blessed art thou. When you call him by his name, he says, blessed art thou. You wake up in the morning, or you are going in the way, or you are taking an exam. Anywhere you are, you just sense it's with me here. And when you sense that, and you say that, he says, blessed art thou. Simon he even mentions your name. By Jonah, the son of Jonah, he even knows your parents. He says, For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. But my father, but my father, you're even in relationship with the father. You're a child of God, a child of the father. And he said, This experience you've got from me. You have received that. You have received the affirmation, the confirmation, and you have received the operation and the revelation from my Father who is in heaven. And I pray that today you've known Christ, you will know him more. Amen. Amen. And as you experience him more in your life, you know, a great journey ahead of you and a great pathway ahead of you, he will support you. He will lead you. He will lift you up. And he will put something in your life that will always activate the dream. And you will know that's where I am going. And because Jesus Christ is always there, if there's any hurdle, if there's any difficulty, if there's any challenge, you say, Lord Jesus, clear the way for me. Your way, your way will be clear every time. My way will be clear every time. My way will be clear every time. And the Lord will see you through to the top in Jesus' name. Now, we're talking about one, two, three. It's like a ladder. And I say one, you go up. I say two, you go up again. I say three, confirmation in your life. Number one. We're looking at number one. Very simple. Who is Jesus to you? We're seeing who Jesus is or was to Peter, to John, to Matthew, to Luke, to Paul. Who is Jesus to you? Number two. What says Jesus to you? Very simple. Who is he to me? What does he say to me? Number three, works of Jesus through youth. Works of Jesus through youth. It's going to work in you. Amen. It's going to work for you. And it's going to work through you. Your life will take a new sparkling. Your life will shine. Your life, something in a heavenly hand will be lifting you up, lifting you up. You'll get, you know, some special students, they get double promotion. There was, uh, you know, one student girl when I was a teacher 
in the high school, she got triple promotion. And you are ready for promotion. I am ready for promotion. He will promote you. He will take you from where you are now to where you ought to be. And number one, number one is who is Jesus to you? Not to them, not to the pastor. I know who he is to me, but yourself. And you have to decide, this is who Jesus is to me. Look at it, number one, who is Jesus to you? The Son of God. The Son of God. I need to explain that to you. The Son of God became the Son of Man, that he may take the sons of men to become the sons of God. Have you seen that graph, the graph that goes from up, that point there, and then goes down, and then curves and goes up again, and comes to that level, the Son of God became the son of man that he may take the sons of men to become the sons of God. That's exactly what Peter said. Look at Matthew there again in Matthew chapter 6 reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 6 verse 16 it says thou art the son of of God. He is the Son of God. And when you experience Him, you experience Him, the Son of God, and He knows how it feels. He knows what it takes to be a Son of God. And as many as received Him, to them He gave power. He gave the privilege. He gave the authority to become the sons of God. Even the people that believe in his name and as you believe in his name today, it will transform your life. He'll take you from among men and then he'll lead you up and you'll become a child of God, son of God, daughter of God. Number two, who is Jesus? Is the savior of the guilty is the savior of the guilty when we are drowning in guilt and swimming in guilt and perishing in guilt he searches us out he sees you there where you are today he sees you there where you are today he has located you say i am located now why has he located you he wants you to be saved from every form of guilt because he is the savior of the guilty. Look at uh, Acts chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 30. Acts chapter 5 verse 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Look at verse 31 and it says him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. The Lord God of heaven lifted him up. He rose from the dead so that he will be a savior to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. If you have not got it yet, it's available for you today. It will forgive your sin. It will take all the guilt away. And then it becomes the savior of the guilty. Number one, the son of God. Number two, the savior of the guilty. Number three is the source of all grace. The source of all grace. Let me explain. Grace is like water. What I mean is this. When you are born, you needed water. You drank water. As you became an infant, 
you drink, you drank water. And then as you became a young fellow in your teens, water. You still take water. And after you've gone to college, in college, you take water. Outside the college, you take water. When you become a professional, you never grow out of I don't need water anymore. I'm now a professional. I'm now married. I'm now a father. I'm now a mother. I don't need the water anymore. I'm old now. I'm in my 70s. And I leave water drinking to young people younger than I know. In your 90s, you still need water. I said grace is like water. As you are starting the journey, the journey with Christ, that he is your savior, you need grace. As you become born again, and you face life, and you are going through life, you need grace. And as you become a professional, and you become a married man, a married woman, you become even a preacher, you become a pastor, you become a leader, you need grace. And in the old years of your life, when you are about to cross over to that a paradise and heaven, the grace that started is the grace that moves on. And that's why Paul the Apostle said, I am what I am by the grace of God. All grace. Grace for salvation. And grace for sustenance. And grace for strength. And grace for steadiness. And grace for steadfastness. Any area, any situation in your life, grace. And it's the source of of all grace. Hey, look at John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 16. In John chapter 1 verse 16. Of his fullness. Like the fullness of the ocean. The fullness of the sea. It never runs dry. Before we were born. That ocean had been there filled with water. And after we have gone, that ocean will still be filled with water. The grace of God had been there before you were born. And before you were born again, and now that you are born again, the grace of God is still there. And the grace keeps on increasing. And the grace keeps on expanding. And it says, of his fullness, have we all received grace for grace. Grace upon grace. Grace after grace. Grace at all levels. And as you come to a day, the level of grace you need, the supply of grace you need, the Lord will grant unto you. Amen. Your life will be gracious. Amen. Your life will be full of grace. And every time, any challenge, every time, in every situation in your life, grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. What's grace? G-R-A-C-E. God's redemption at Christ's expense. Redemption. That I don't have to work for that. I don't have to pay anything for that. God's redemption at Christ's expense. What's grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. I want to buy something. I don't have the money that covers the cost. And the Lord comes and he says, what do you want? Pick it, a page for it. Anything you want in life. The position you need in life and the place you're dreaming. I want to get to. I don't have the resources. I don't have the riches. The Lord Jesus comes by your side. He said, where do you want to go? What level do you want to reach? Look at that. I paid for it. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. He that knew no sin was made a sin offering for you and for me that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Receive the grace. 
Are you there? Receive the grace. Nothing will be so difficult and impossible for you. Number four, who is Jesus to me? Who is Jesus to you? He is the sanctifier of the godly. The sanctifier of the godly. <laughs> Sometimes when you hear people and they say sanctification. I don't know how that will happen in my life. Maybe I struggle more. Maybe I supplicate more. Maybe I surrender more. Maybe I submit more. Maybe I strategize more. Maybe I study more. It's not about you sanctifying yourself. Who do you say Jesus is? And who is Jesus unto you? He is the savior of the sinner. He is also the sanctifier of the godly. He has made you godly when you came to Christ. He took all your sins away. And now he wants to cleanse your heart. He wants to purify your heart. He wants to make you whiter than snow. It's not something you do for yourself. He is the sanctifier of the godly. He tells us in um, Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 12. Hebrews 13 verse 12, Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, the people, all who come, the people, his own people, the people who have appeared before him and they were saved and they were forgiven and their names were written in the book of life. Those people, they now come to him and Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood so far without the gate. In verse 13, it says, let us go forth therefore. The word therefore it says, therefore, because of what he has done, because of what he has purchased, and because of what he provides, it says, let us, all we need to do is to want it, is to desire it, is to ask for it, is to come to him and to say, I know that you are the sanctifier of your people. Let us go forth Therefore, unto him without the calm, bearing his reproach. In verse 14, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. We're seeking that city to come. And if we're going to enter that city, there is just one condition, blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. We're coming now to number five. Who Jesus is to us. In the circle. In the support. In temptation. Support in temptation. I'm looking at um, First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there has no temptation taking you, come to you, that but such as is common to man. I need to explain. You know, God is a wise God, a wise father. Is a wise governor. He governs our lives. Hey, let me go back to school. When the primary school, primary one child wants to go for test, we we'll call it test, we we'll call it exam. When the JSS1 student wants to go for test, test, 
we call it exam and when the undergraduate first year wants to go for test we call it exam for the primary school child exam and the secondary school child exam and the undergraduate exam but although we call everything all those tests by the word exam examination it is not the same subject matter it is not the same test it is not the same exam our teachers are so wise that they only provide the test for primary one child at his level and the test for secondary school child at her level and the test for the undergraduate at its level and we say test 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 exam and it says god in his wisdom will not give you if you are primary one if you are kindergarten in the christian faith in the christian journey it's not going to give you an exam it test. it's not going to allow a temptation that only an undergraduate can handle if you're a teenager it's not going to allow a temptation that only somebody in his starches in the christian life is handling what the lord is telling us is that it will so moderate every temptation that comes to you that you will overcome i will overcome first of all when the test has come you settle your mind this is what god has prepared me for this is what the teacher has taught me about and if i just keep cool and recollect and look up to the lord this temptation i will overcome say it for yourself it, look, look at that look, it says it very clearly there it says there has no temptation taking you but such as is common to man but god is faithful god is faithful somebody say amen, amen. god is faithful who will not suffer you allow you permit you to be tempted above that ye are able he doesn't give a secondary student test to a primary school follower pupil he doesn't give a postgraduate test to a secondary school student because he will not allow you to be tempted above that ye are able but with the temptation also make a way to escape i will escape i will escape somebody is inside a bar inside the cell there are poles in a cell and he's so dejected and so unhappy why am i here and he turns his back and he's facing the wall he's holding the bars two bars is there crying crying and behind him the door had been opened because his freedom has been pronounced and announced and the door is wide open but it's turning its back to the door that is open and is holding on to those iron bars they said come out he said i cannot because i'm in the cell i came to tell you here today your cell has been opened turn around release the spores that you are holding he has made a way of escape that's why you are there today and as you escape he'll make your life to be spotless sparkling you'll be free in jesus name every time a trial 
a temptation comes, you remember that God will always make a way, a way to escape. Just turn around and face the promise of God and you will have testimony. Because he is our soccer, our support in temptation. Number six, he is our baptizer of the spirit of power. Our baptizer of the spirit of power. It tells us in Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. I've been assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart out from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. And then in verse 5, it says, For John truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized of the holy ghost not many days hence any amen there yeah. you will be baptized that word baptize baptizo in the original is to dip you inside a water it's to immerse you it's to submerge you that it's like take a cup a glass a glass and you put that glass inside a bucket of water inside that glass will have water inside and water all around that's what it does when christ the baptizer submerges you in the holy spirit inside you the power of the holy ghost all around you the power fire of the holy ghost and you will never be the same again in jesus name in verse 8 it says for ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. All the fear will be burnt out of your life. All the timidity burnt out of your life. All the shivering and, you know, uh, your house is closed and you don't know what you're going to say. When you come before that person, the Lord will release you. And this day, I pray. And this day, I affirm and confirm. You are released into the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Where is that one? Here. Because it was talking in Jerusalem and when you travel travel or the most part of the earth that's where you are today and the Lord will release his power and the Holy Ghost in your life today in Jesus name now number seven the last but not the least he tells us he is the son of righteousness it tells us in malachi chapter 4 reading from verse 2 malachi chapter 4 verse 2 but unto you who is that unto you i said who is that god has a good plan for you your life will not remain like the life leave the mediocrity you are rising up the sun will shine before you. Your life will take on a new stature and a new sunshine in Jesus' name. But unto you that fear my name. It's not uh, the fear that makes you to tremble. It's talking about that honor my name that respects my name that reverence my name and that lifts up my name for you that fear honor my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings with healing in his wings what if i 
told you today that every sickness your body carries that is a strange load which should not be on your body. Amen. Amen. I learned of a woman, village woman, when lorries first came to their community. She was standing by the side of the road and the driver looking at her thinking that could be my mother and because of the love he the driver had for his mother it says let me do good to a mother and stopped the lorry and said mama please come into the lorry i know where you are going i'll take you right there in front of your house and mama was so grateful but she's never entered a lorry like that before and she was carrying a load on her head and she entered and the driver moved on and the driver just looked back and saw mama still carrying the load on her head and the driver stopped and said my mother why are you still carrying the load on your head? Ah, mama said you'll be so good to me to grant me a place in uh, your lorry and you told me to enter in and i didn't want to take you for granted so my load has been on my head so i can carry my load while you carry me and the driver said the driver did not make fun did not laugh the driver just said mama is not like that that i carry you and your load put your load down and the car the lorry will carry you and your load the car will carry you and your load look at jesus he said come and if you come he'll give you rest all the load of sickness you carry all the load that burdens you that you carry all the load too heavy for you to carry it will carry you and your load and then as the driver told mama that put your load down i will carry you and drop you in front of your house jesus will carry you he will carry your load he will carry your sickness he will drop you in front of your mansion in heaven i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again to receive you unto myself so that where i am there you will be with the eagle's eye I see you already in front of your mansion in heaven. He will carry you. He will carry you. He will carry you and bring you in front of your mansion in heaven. Who is Christ? Who is Jesus unto me, unto you? We're coming to number two now. Number two, what says Jesus to you? What's Jesus telling you today? Number one. Number one, follow me now, always, in all things. Number two, have faith, never wavering at any time. Number three, fear not, abide always in my truth that's what the lord is telling me telling you telling every one of us look at number one follow me now always in all things follow me now he will not lead you astray he lead you to the right spot he knows the plan of god for you from all eternity and he knows the path to get there and he says just follow me i'll lead you there you follow me now you follow me always and you follow me at all times in all things in matthew chapter 4 verse 19 matthew chapter 4 verse 19 and he says unto them follow me and i will make you 
Follow me and I will make you. Now, Peter happened to be a fisherman. And so, what the Lord has called him for, he used the language he will understand. And he said, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. Fishers of men. But, you know, for me, I'm not a fisherman, really, in a sense that Peter was a fisherman. But he still said, follow me and I will make you the destiny. The thing, the man, the woman, you ought to be. All you need to do, follow me and I will make you. He will make you. I said they will make you. You say, what am I supposed to do? He put that dream in your heart already. Look at Joseph. Follow me. I'll make you fulfill the dream. And look at Joshua. As Joshua was following, he called him to be another person. And follow me and I will make you. Are you supposed to be a captain? Are you supposed to be a doctor? Are you supposed to be an engineer? Are you supposed to be a farmer? Are you supposed to be a gardener? Are you supposed to be a person having chains of restaurants? Are you supposed to be a political person? He says, I know why you are created. I know why you are here. Follow me and I will make you first class, first rate professional in Jesus name yeah. he will do it for you yeah. I said he will do it for you yeah. you know when I was growing uh, you know as a primary school child I used to be like you like you know every other child uh, instead of reading I'll be playing Instead, I didn't even have any dream. I didn't know where I was going. I just, I woke up in the morning. I did what all the other young people were doing. And the evening we took our supper. And then after some hours in the moonlight, storytelling was slept. That's all I knew about life. But Jesus knew what I was to be. And Jesus knows what you are to be. I'm waiting for you. Yeah. Maybe you've been playing like I was playing. You've been, you know, doing whatever like I was doing. And I didn't have any idea, any goal, and any dream. Nothing. But the Lord said, follow me. And then I followed him. And now, by the grace of God, I, I'm not through yet, but he's making me. I'm making me. I'm making me. He'll start making you. And he will make you. And you see where I am now. Now understand. We have, we're, we're in a stadium here. And if you see the track, we have track there, track there track there and as the athlete is running you don't have to run behind that athlete there's your lane over there run in your lane and the person who is in front of you will not stop you or hinder you and then another person is taking another lane i have my lane i'm running you have your lane you are running and when you catch up with me. I'm looking for those who will catch up with me. You'll not say, Pastor, get out of your lane because I'm now behind and I want to take over. I said, keep to your lane. As you keep to your lane there, God is going to make you who he has created you to be. But you follow him. That's what he's saying to you. He says, Follow me, and I will make of you fishers of men. And then in verse 20, in verse 20, it says, And they straightway let their nets. There are people who are wedded to their nets. They miss the day of Pentecost. There are people who are wedded to their nets. I'm used to this. I cannot leave the known for the unknown. I don't know what the future is going to be. Three years time, three and a half years time, four years time. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to hold on to my net. 
as long as you're holding on to the old nature, you're not going to be able to have that future fishery, that future fishing that you are going to bring a lot into the kingdom of God. I pray God will give you the heart to leave the old net behind and then to move on and you'll become a fisher of men. And it says, this straight way, let their nets and follow him. Who is going to follow? What are you? Your life will be great. Your life will be much, much better than you ever thought in your life. I don't know which village you come from and which family you come from. You'll be the best man, the best woman that ever came from that family. Number two, number two, it says, have faith never wavering at any time. Now, you didn't force God to make a promise to you. He just looked at you and he loved you. He loved you because of what his only begotten son has done for you. You are young, but he loves you. You are growing, but he loves you. Sometimes you are faulty, you make some mistakes, but he loves you all the same. He doesn't look at what you are now. He looks at what you will become after his work on you. He's working on you. Is working on me. You know, if you go to the factory and you see those who are weaving, if you go to the factory and you see those who are dealing with ceramic industry, and then you look at what they are trying to make, you say, this one is not good enough. This one is not beautiful enough. And this one is not smooth enough. Oh, and the uh, potter will tell you, the pot is still in the making. You come too soon. And you view it too soon. Come back in a week's time and come and look at it. And you see the pattern. And you see the way, the portrait. And, you know, the same thing with you. When people look at you now, they say, hmm, this one is not good enough. You say, I am still a product in the making. He has not finished with me yet. Has he finished with you? Because he has not finished. All those people that come, they are commenting, they are criticizing. It's not good enough. It's not tall enough. It's not high enough. It's not large enough. It's not an expert enough to say, no, don't comment. I am not a finished product yet. The Lord is still working on me. My daughter there, the Lord is still working on you. My son there, the Lord is still working on you. And let them come back in another week, another year. They will see something they never expected to see. They will see your life in Jesus' name. And you too, you have faith in God. God has called me. And what is Jesus saying to me today? I'm looking at Mark chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Mountain is there. Have faith in God. The tears are flowing in your eyes. Have faith in God. Something unexpected had happened. Have faith in God. Look at the door that was open before. And that door appears closing now. Have faith in God. If you have faith in God, every closed door will be open. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, it says... For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. It says, but he shall believe 
that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have. I will have. You will have. He shall have. She shall have whatsoever he says. Whatsoever he says, that's what you will have. I said that's what you will have. Do you know some young people, what they always say, oh, please, don't expect too much of me. I'm a stupid boy. Please, don't expect too much from me. Mommy was not too brilliant. That's what she told me. Now I'm taking after my mom, and I'm not too brilliant also. That's what they say about themselves. Don't look at me. You know, I'm always tired. I'm always weak. Don't look at me. What my age mates do, I've discovered. I can't. I don't. That's what they say about themselves. But change your language about yourself. And don't continue to say, I cannot, now I can. Somebody there. Somebody there, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Look at that athlete. Look at the way she is running. And look at the way she breaks every record. Just about a few years ago, she was only trotting and running on the street, doing an exercise. And she couldn't compete with anybody. But day by day, she practiced and said, I can Day by day, she got up in the morning and said, This is the duty of the early morning. I can. And every time when other people are running and she sees somebody running so fast and then breaks through to the line unexpectedly, it says, That is what I will become. Say it, say it, say it. And when you say it for the first time, it doesn't appear real, say it again. When you say it again, it doesn't appear you will achieve, say it again. Because you will have what you say. I will have what I say. Say it. I told you that when I was young, I was, you know, just very playful. And sometimes I will, even, um, you know, my daddy will think I've gone to school. I will not go to school. I'll go other places, just, just enjoying myself. And I will, a person like that will be like mediocre. But I remember when we were in uh, class three at that time. And a student teacher came from the University of Ibadan to our school. He didn't know us, he didn't know me, and um, so he taught us a little and gave us some, you know, psalms to solve, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, that day, uh, just, just, just was a good day for me, your good day will come. I said, your good day will come. I remember what I'd been saying. I'm a village boy. Daddy didn't go to university, so why should I go to university? And mommy didn't do this, why should I do it? That's what I'm saying, and that's what I was getting. Because you will have what you say. And there's a teacher that, that day came to class and gave us, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, psalms to solve in algebra. And um, so that day, I was serious. Say serious. Yeah. Look at that clock on the wall. The clock is dead. But the clock stopped at quarter after five. And that quarter after five, no battery it's not running, it's dead at quarter after five, but every day in the morning, quarter after five, that clock is correct. Every evening, quarter after five, that clock is correct. 
Am I right? That day, the dead boy, dead to mathematics, that day his clock was correct. You understand? Clap for yourself. Praise the Lord. I did number one, I did number two, I did number three. Correct. That was my clock that day. And then number four, number five, number six. Correct. And this teacher, he didn't know me. He didn't know that my clock was just correct at that point. And he marked one. Give me 17, 2, 17, 3, 17, 4, 17, 5, 17, 6, 17. And when he multiplied and did everything together, he arrived at 102%. And he left it like that. And he came to class distributing our papers and he called everybody. And he didn't call my name. He was holding to my name. He wanted to see the genius that did this. And so, after that, he now said, who is? Then he mentioned my name. And carefully, I stood up because I didn't know what he was saying. Because what I had been saying is that I cannot, I could not, I will not, I'm always at the back of the class. And then that day, he said, who is this? Stand up. And I stood up. And he looked at the whole class. He said, this is a mathematician. And then he gave my paper to me. And all, my, all the members in our class, all our students, they didn't call me William anymore. They called me mathematician. I go this way, mathematician. I come that way, mathematician. And since the teacher said so, and my classmates said so, and whenever they have any mathematical problem, they come to me and they say, mathematician, please help me. That changed my language. I started calling myself mathematician when i said it for the first time it didn't clock very well i said it everybody is saying it it must be true and the mathematician inside me woke up got up and then eventually i came to the university of ibada 1964 i passed out 1967 i an art first class degree in mathematics because i said so what are you saying about yourself say it it will happen say it it will happen say it in the private say it in the public say it in your heart say it to your friend say it to whoever cares to learn and to hear you will become what you say and then it says in verse 24, in verse 24, Therefore say I unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. Have faith, never wavering, at any time, look at number three here. Number three, fear not, abide always in my truth. Fear not. It calls you not to fear. It says in your life, when you are called to go this direction, don't say a lion is in the way. Difficulties are in the way. And hindrances are in the way. Fear not, the Lord will go before you and you will get there and the next time i see you you will say daddy you said so i got there where is he where is she there i see you there you will get there in jesus name fear not abide always 
in the truth. It tells us in Luke chapter 12, verse 32. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, fear not. You wake up in the morning and something habitually that always came. I'm going, I fear the bully. I'm going now, I fear that big boy, big girl. I fear those who terrorize me. And it's like, I shouldn't come out of the house. Fear not. All those enemies are defeated before you. Because the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Fear not. Little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To give you the kingdom. You have a portion of the kingdom. I have a portion of the kingdom. She has a portion of the kingdom. And the portion assigned to you will not be given to me. The portion assigned to her will not be given to him. You are a possessor. I said you are a possessor. And so fear not. Abide always in his truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. 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 I am free. Free to obtain, free to partake, and free to arrive, and free to achieve. Everything is called upon you to achieve in this life. And there you cross over to the other side. Here you are blessed, and there in eternity you are blessed in Jesus' name. We'll come to number three now, point number three works of Jesus through youths. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, what Jesus has done for you. That one is there. Number two, works Jesus is doing in you. Number three, wonders Jesus does through youths. Number one, what Jesus has done for you. Has he done something for you? Forgiveness? Has he done something for you? Salvation? Has he done something for you? He's taking your guilt and condemnation and judgment away from you. Has he done something for you? It's going to prepare a place for you in heaven. Has he done something for you? A lot of blessings and benefits it brings in your life. He's done it for me. He's done it for you. I said he's done it for you. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ. A Passover is sacrificed for us. Sacrificed for me. Say it. The food is prepared for everybody in the family, but you in particular, if you think uh, everybody but not me, everybody can take but not me, you will not come. But your portion is there. In the kingdom of God, your portion is there. In the promises of God, your portion is there. In the salvation of God, your portion is there. In the success in life, your portion is there. Come, Christ has sacrificed everything for you. And shed off 
the old weakness and the old uh, impossibility shed that off because Christ is sacrificed for you. That's why it says in verse 8, in verse 8, it says, Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old leaven. Not of the old language, not of the old confession, not of the old habit, not of the old character, not of the old company. Because your company tells who you are and who you will be. Come out from there and it says not of the living of malice or wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth we're moving on you are moving on and it says to you that this is what i've done for you you go forward you will achieve look at number two there number two is what jesus is doing in you right now what Jesus is doing in you now. What he has done and what he is doing. Have you seen uh, that car owner? Uh, maybe in your house, but in the next house. Every time you get up, you're going to school. Every time you get up, you're going to work. Every time you get up, you're going to do something. You'll find him every morning is washing that car. Every morning is tuning up the foil. Every morning is, uh, you know, trying to check this. He opens it. He's doing that every day. Do you think that car owner is wiser than Jesus? What I'm telling you is every day, even in the night when you're sleeping, do you know Jesus is walking on you when you're sleeping? I want an answer. You know, if you look at your life, you understand, in the night, you're tired, you're worn out. Your brain cannot read anything and assimilate. It's tired and worn out. And then you have, if we tell you at 9 p.m., come on, you're going to run your relay race to say, I'm just fagged out, fatigued. I cannot do anything. And then you sleep in the night. God works and resets your brain and resets your mind and the weariness you had in the night, everything is cleared up. You wake up in the morning and you say, now, better than last night, I can take on anything. Why? Because he's doing that in you. If he does that in our brain while we're sleeping, it works on our heart. It works on our goals. It works on our intentions. It works on everything. And it's cleaning us. It's uh, foiling us. It's doing this and that. God, every time, is working on you. It's working on me. I said it's working on me. It's done for us in the past. It's doing now for us at the present. And the work of Christ will never stop in your life. In John chapter 5 verse 17. John chapter 5 verse 17. But Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto. What? I thought he had stopped. Because he put the stars he puts Mercury, he puts Plato, he puts Orion, he puts all those planets there. And I thought, it doesn't work anymore. Jesus said, every time the creation of God, my Father walketh hitherto. He looked at what he had planned for the descendants of Abraham. And as he led them through Assyria and through the land of the Philistines, and he led them through the Grecian Empire, he's walking and walking. My Father walketh hitherto. And then he sent John the Baptist and he sent Jesus unto them. And he's going to send the apostles unto them. My Father walketh 
hitherto. There is no moment that the Father is not working on his creation. But then the beauty of it for you and for me. My Father walketh hitherto and I work. I work. He worked on your salvation and now your God saved is working and you're being steadfast and stable and sustained. And I work. He works in your soul. He works in your spirit. He works in your body. He works on your journey. He works on your achievement. He works on everything. He continues to work. My father worketh hitherto and I work. Praise God. I said, praise God. Jesus is working in me all the time. How about you? I said, I about you. How about you? Jesus is working in your life every time. That's why every day will lead to the next step forward. Every week will lead to the next stage forward. Every month will lead to the next status forward because Jesus keeps walking in you. And if any sickness comes, it's always there. The abiding healer, the abiding doctor is walking on you. He'll take that sickness away in Jesus' name. Number three here. Number three, wonders. Jesus Doors through you and through youths. Wonders, wonders. The people of Egypt never knew that a youth called Joseph is the one that will work wonders and the whole nation will be delivered. And the people of Israel didn't know that a child God called Jeremiah was the one that will come and show them the revelation of God and the revelation to be where they ought to be. And neither did the people know that somebody called John the Baptist, a youth, a young adult, is the one that will come and reveal the coming Messiah unto them. And people did not know that Mary, the virgin, still in the bracket of the young adults was the one that will bring Jesus the Savior to the world and neither do people around you know that you are the man, you are the woman that will do wonders in this land in this continent, in our world today in Jesus name. At whatever age you are, the Lord through you say Amen the Lord, through your pronouncement, through your utterance, through your vision, through your auditory organs, and through hearing, and through everything the Lord has given you, it is through you the Lord will accomplish his wonders. Where are you? We're waiting for you. I said, we're waiting for you. They all came together and they wanted to raise up the king. And as they got together, all the officers were there. And the person to be made king, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He's hiding somewhere. He said, no, I cannot. No, I will not. Me to lead a whole nation? No, I cannot. And Samuel said, search for him. Search for him. We're searching for you. The Lord is searching for you. The nation is searching for you. And they saw him tall, lanky. And he was above all others from shoulder up. They said, they're calling you. I didn't want to do that. That's why I was hiding. And they brought him out of the hiding. And Samuel, Samuel said, this is the man. And I come to declare to you, that's the lady there. That's the man there. The Lord has got you. The Lord has got you. And the Lord said in John chapter 14 verse 12, it says John chapter 14 verse 12 is telling us when he finds you, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me. She that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he also do. What does that mean? It says, you are my representative. I have to go back to heaven so that I can prepare a place for the millions, myriads of people who are going to come into the kingdom. But I leave you there now. In this generation, you are standing in for me there. In that community, you are standing in for me there. In that territory, you are standing for me there. And what I would have done if if I were there, I place you there, you will do it. I said you will do it. He that believeth on me, the works I do shall he do, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Jesus, that one. I don't understand. Greater works than this shall he do because I go to my father. What we're saying is this. Between the time of my departure and the time of my coming back again, many inventions will come. Aeroplane will come. There was no aeroplane when I was there because it wasn't time yet. Aeroplane will come. I will raise some of you to become uh, pilots and engineers that will deal with that. Something I never dealt with, you will deal with them in Jesus' name. Before I come, internet will come, computer will come. And the things I didn't have any kind of chance to do because those things have not come. But I don't worry because I leave you behind and you will be a computer engineer. And you will be a pilot flying all those jets. And they even have the Concord now. And you'll be going up and up and up in Jesus' name. And marine engineers and all the things that, you know, that were not here when Jesus was here. He said, you are the man on the spot right now. You are the woman on the spot right now. And so, don't say I cannot because if Jesus were here, there is nothing he will say I cannot do. Now, you are here. Christ in you will do everything. And through the young people of today, anywhere in the government, anywhere in every profession, everywhere in the colleges, anywhere in the schools, in education, the Lord is raising you up. I will. I said I will. And you will do what I have not done. You know, sometimes when I say that, the young people say, Pastor, you are trying to just, you know, put us on a horse. I'm not. I cannot fly an aeroplane. Some of you will. At this age now, I'm not going to be a governor in any state, president of our country. Some of you will. At this age now, I cannot, you know, go back to school and be lecturers and be professors. I'm already a professor of the Bible, so I don't see any other profession. And some of you will become professors in Jesus' name. You will do. I will. I will. I will. And it's my joy to see that now... Achievers are everywhere. Any achiever there? Any achiever there? Rise up, rise up, rise up. And say, I am, I am here. And I will do, I will do. Everything the Lord has called on me to do, I will do. Power in your life. Anointing in your life. Glory in your life. Achievement in your life. In Jesus' name. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, who is Jesus to you? Is the Son of God? Is the Savior? 
of the guilty is the source of all grace who is jesus to you he is the sanctifier and he come to sanctify the godly who is jesus to you is the succor and the support the succor and the support of all those who are tempted who is jesus unto you he is the sustainer of the people who are growing and will sustain you in jesus name is a baptizer in the spirit or the spirit of power who is jesus unto you open your heart to him and say lord you are all in all for me tell him tell him all in all for me all in all for me is the son of righteousness he'll bring righteousness into your life righteousness into your life that's who jesus is tell him and rejoice you're living at such a time like this and whatever he has called you to be he says follow me and i'll make you i'll make you i'll make of you what you ought to be follow him have faith in him don't have any doubt at all all that thing he has painted in your heart have faith in him and if you say to this mountain be thou removed it will go out of your life stop saying negative things about yourself downgrading things about yourself degrading things about yourself say the positive and say the provided and say what christ has done and provided for you they'll be confirmed in heaven and then he says fear not fear not rise up and move fear not rise up and climb fear not rise up and make progress fear not forget the past forget the past and then look at what is before you a bright future a great future made for you fear not you will get there remember what is done for you is provided salvation for you and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved remember what he has done for you is provided sanctification purification purifying of the earth remember what he has done for you he has provided the power of the holy ghost in your life and remember what he is doing doing in your life right now every day is working in your life and remember watch work wonder you will do through you you'll be a wonder man a wonder woman a wonder boy a wonder girl and god will achieve through you great things that were not found any other youth achieving think of yourself as first class not second rate think of yourself a first class achiever and wherever you are now higher 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 you will go in jesus name in jesus name we pray father we thank you for thus far you have brought us you have forgiven those who have asked you for forgiveness. You have saved those who have asked you to be saved. I pray the grace to remain forgiven, free, saved, empowered, strengthened. That grace will continue in every life in Jesus' name. The failure of the past cancelled. The guilt of the past cancelled. Condemnation of the past cancelled. Weakness, weakness, anemic. All that of the past cancelled in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray, be the sanctifier of everyone. The baptizer in the Holy Ghost for everyone. And the son of righteousness for everyone right now. And as I've told us to follow and you'll make us what we're created to be, I pray as 
each and every one, no exception. Everyone to the right, to the left, to the front, to the back. As everyone follows, you will definitely, unmistakably, you will make of everyone what you have created us to be in Jesus' name. What our seniors have not done. What our daddies, our mommies have not done. What we have not read in the history, in the book of records, that others who have gone beyond, before us, what they have not done. Lord, raise up the young adults. Raise up the teenagers. Raise up the youths and place them high, higher that their predecessors in Jesus name all the resources to do that all the riches to do that all the thirst and the passion to do that and all the vision to do that all the tirelessness to do that do it in everyone in Jesus name Lord in our lifetime as fathers as mothers as leaders as teachers as preachers as pastors in our lifetime where we'll see all these youths here and all over our country nigeria will see the youths of africa see the youths beyond africa all over the world will see them climb to the peak we their parents have not got to cancel sickness out of their body weakness out of their heart tiredness out of their personality lord like the eagles they will mount up in jesus name those who are falling lift them up those who are discouraged, lift them up. Those who are giving up and they said, there's no point, there's no point. Oh Lord, new life, new vitality, a new fire, a new passion, a new zeal in them, in Jesus' name. Confirm everyone a new achiever or the new creature and a new nature, and a new passion, and a new person that will achieve in Jesus' name. Confirmed. 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 In your life, your family, confirmed. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, you are not the same again. In the name of the Lord, praise the Lord, it is confirmed in my life. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Amen. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, you are going to give your testimony.